So uh, in today's program, our uh, chief guest is uh, our honorable chief guest, um, Chairman Bangladesh Food Safety Authority, Muhammad Abdul Kayyum Sharkar, is the additional secretary of Bangladesh government. And this program will be chaired by Mr. Munju Hawk, who is the representative of private sectors. And we have some other guests. We have guest of honor, our ex-chairman, Mr. Muhammad Mahfuzul Hawk. We have our honorable ex-member, Ms. Professor Iqbal Dov Mamun. We have current members, Mr. Reza Ol Korim. So we'll, we'll, we'll conduct this session in Bangla. So maybe we'll introduce you as in English. And ultimately, in today's program, our keynote, our keynote speaker is J.C. Pipan. He is the Eastern Professor of Kansas State University. We have been running a program, a capacity developing program in Bangladesh for food safety. And JC is the uh, leader. He is uh, leading us to implement the program for uh, capacity development of Bangladesh Food Safety Authority. This program is funded by USAID and USDA. And we're working here uh, in collaboration with Kansas State University and Health Commons Bangladesh. Anyway, so I welcome all the guests and all the participants of the programs. Will formally uh, go for the programs. The uh, I am wel welcome you all. The uh, second World Food Safety Day. The theme of this program is food, uh, food safety. Everyone's business. So I'll go in Bangla. Uh, so Nirapod Khadu Divosh Dito Barer Moto Bangladesh Nirapod Khadu Kurte Boko Palam Kurte Jache Bangladesh. So a program is Vishay Bostu Hoche. The Nirapod Khadu Nirapodo Ta Shopoli Ri Type Ko. So, এই আলোকে আমরা এই প্রোগ্রামটা সাজিয়েছি অনুষ্ঠানে প্রথমে অনুষ্ঠানে প্রথমে আমরা একটি কিনোট স্পিকারের কাছ থেকে আমরা বক্তব্য শুনব এই ওয়ার্ল্ড ফুড সেফটি ডে সম্পর্কে এবং ফুড সেফটি সম্পর্কে তো আমি এখন রিকোয়েস্ট করব আমাদের আজকের কিনোট স্পিকার জেসি ভাইপার মিসিটন প্রফেসর ক্যান্সার স্টেট ইউনিভার্সিটি টু ডেলিভার হিজ স্পিচ জেসি ইউ ক্যান ডেলিভার ইউ স্পিচ ইউ রিকোয়েস্টেড টু ডেলিভার ইউ স্পিচ দি থিম बेस्ड অন দি ফুড সেফটি Uh, if you want business. All right. Well, thank you so much for the introduction, Imrul. And assalamu alaikum to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And I wanted to start off by simply stating that today is, is a really important day for me. Um, it, it's a day that I've committed most of my uh, adult life to learning about and working on. And so that is the issue of food safety, particularly food safety as it pertains to a, a global context. And so we have been working in Bangladesh now for about two years. I'm very lucky to work with Imrul and Masood and the BFSA and, and participate um, in helping to capacity to your system. And I, I've very much enjoyed my time in Bangladesh. It's a beautiful country. And uh, I, I uh, am hoping to be back at some point. And I know that this presentation and this, this outlet is a little bit challenging sometimes trying to do things online, but we will we'll do the best we can. And if you have any questions, there is a question box for all attendees. And so go ahead and just type your questions in there. I think Imrul and myself can, can try to manage those. And so with that, I, I love the title of, of how um, they're celebrating food safety this year, which is that food safety is really everyone's business. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why why that is and and then come to a space where where i outline a couple of different ways that it, it really is everyone's business and so i like to start most of my talks off the same way which is to really just ask the question what you know sorry why is food safety important not what excuse my my slide there so why is food safety important and most of the time um Individuals will answer question, this question um, stating that it's important for trade or it's important for health. And, and I think all of those things are, are a part of that answer. I really tend to boil it down to that food safety is important because people are important. 
And we know that food safety has so much to do with not only the health of individuals within a population, but their ability to, to live prosperous lives, as well as, as the ability for a country to grow economically, as well as, as from a, a human perspective. And so I always like to say that food safety is important because people are important. And so when it comes to food safety, really the goal around food safety is that we're attempting to keep individuals within populations from becoming ill from the food that they are consuming. And so we don't want people to, to experience disease, particularly diarrheal disease, because of the impacts that it has on their ability to, to go to work, their ability to go to school, as well as their ability to grow and, and to feel healthy. And so when we talk about foodborne illness, you know, really some of those common symptoms, and, I, and I'm not going to beat this to death because I know that we have a lot of, of food safety people in the room, but most of the common symptoms are really nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. We do see people who experience headaches or fever, and, and sometimes <coughs> those, those can occur very quickly and be over, and sometimes they, they actually extend a little bit longer, and people can experience those symptoms for a week, up to two weeks. And when we think about the people that we are really attempting to protect in terms of food safety, it's really the people who are at, at highest risk. And so when we look at our populations of interest for food safety, we are specifically looking to protect children. Um, those uh, that are under the age of five are particularly susceptible to foodborne illness. And I think it becomes very easy to see how important it is to make sure that our next generation is very healthy and that they grow up um, to be the strongest that they can possibly be. And so making sure that we, we protect the health of, of young children. We also worry quite a bit about pregnant women and the child that they're carrying because they are immunocompromised due to the fact that they're carrying that child. And so for, for a woman to be able to carry her child, her immune system actually downregulates itself. We also worry about people who are immunocompromised. So those who may be um, experiencing uh, some form of a disease that is suppressing their immune system. And then the elderly. So individuals over the age of 60, we really want to pay attention to those populations. And so you can quickly, quickly see that food safety really impacts a lot of different people. And even if we don't find ourselves within one of those population, populations of interest, I am confident that we all know someone who is within that group. And so we want to make sure and always bring that human component to, to what we're doing and, and, and try to make sure that, that that's the forefront of how we're thinking about food safety. So I'm, if you have uh, not been aware of the 2015 World Health Organization report, um, I'm going to present some information on that. If you have, I'm just going to kind of recap a little bit. So one of the biggest findings of the World Health Organization's report on the global burden of foodborne disease was that they found that foodborne disease on a global level is comparable in its disease burden to that of the three major infectious diseases. So that includes HIV, AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis. And so when you think about how much funding and how much effort goes into trying to prevent um, tuberculosis, uh, malaria, HIV, AIDS, that's a pretty large effort. And to identify that, that the foodborne diseases are actually comparable to those diseases, I think is a very impactful uh, estimate and something that we should really pay attention to. In terms of foodborne diseases and, and what are they caused by, um, it's really the carriage of bacteria, viruses, parasites, chemicals, and toxins within our food. And so you go to the, the market or to the store and you purchase, say, an apple, 
and that apple has either bacteria on it, viruses, or it may have pesticides. And then that actually creates some form of um, an adverse uh, health outcome. And, and so when we think about this on a global level, we really begin to recognize that a majority of the burden for foodborne disease from a, from a disease burden perspective is really placed on children. And so that's children under the age of five. And when we think about the fact that every year, 550 million people fall ill from foodborne disease, and of that 550 million, 220 million are children. And, and that is, I think, an astounding statistic, particularly when we think about the fact that this is preventable disease. These are, these are things, we, we understand some of the mechanisms that are necessary in order to prevent these types of diseases. And so um, there's, there's a lot that can be done. There's a lot of promise in these estimates. I always, you know, when we talk about food safety, sometimes I feel like it takes a little bit of a negative tone, but I think that there's a lot of positive outcomes because we, we really do have some, some great tools in our, our tool chest that we can pull out in order to begin to, to prevent these types of diseases. This is an interesting article. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this, but I wanted to bring this to your attention. I have the, the reference right here. This is a review that was in Nature, and what this review looked at was individuals who um, grow up, young children who grow up in unhygienic environments and how that really contributes to um, cyclical disease within those, those children and how that cyclical disease contributes to what we call the cycle of poverty. And so we, there is evidence that demonstrates that when children experience repeated episodes of diarrheal illness, particularly in their first two years of life, that really impacts their ability to, to grow and be healthy. And so they, they have estimated that, that children who are, repeat, are experiencing repeated episodes of diarrheal disease will experience up to an eight centimeter growth shortfall, which is stunting as well as a reduction of 10 IQ points. And, and that's, those are pretty astounding numbers when we begin to, to apply them to a person's ability to be prosperous and to do well in school and, and become someone who, who goes out into the workforce and is a prosperous person. In terms of what that then means for that child as they, they grow older, right? Right. Stunting is really heavily associated with elevated chronic disease, um, increased risk of non-completion of school, and lower adult earning potentials. So, so this, this food safety issue and foodborne illness issue is really more than just whether or not you felt bad for a couple of days. It really can impact, impact our children and cause, cause lifelong um, experiences, negative experiences. So when it comes to foodborne illness in Bangladesh, and these numbers are not super um, up to date, but, but they are a nice picture of, of what's happening within Bangladesh. Um, there's an estimated 30 million people who suffer each year from food, foodborne illness within uh, the country of Bangladesh. That is commonly diarrheal disease. And so it kind of takes us back to some of the different points I've made, which is that diarrheal disease is really, um, has a very heavy impact on the children that we are raising. And when it comes to the, the whether or not the experience is foodborne and waterborne, we are seeing that there's 2.2 million people annually who are, are dying from, from those diseases, and 1.9 million of them are children. And so that is, that is a very Bangladesh-specific set of, of data, and 
and really begins to kind of drive home the point that Bangladesh does have some issues in terms of foodborne illness and that bacterial pathogens are contributing pretty heavily to the public health burden that is being experienced within the country. I want to shift really quickly to talk about what, what are the costs of food safe, of foodborne illness. And so we've, we've kind of talked through, okay, so these are the public health outcomes. These, these are the, the situations that are being created by foodborne illness, but there's a cost associated to unsafe food as well. And so when it comes to uh, an estimate of the cost of, of global foodborne illness, the World Bank put out a report in 2019. And what they found is that on a global scale, unsafe food costs up to $110 billion, and that's US dollars. And so that's a pretty heavy um, cost that the world is experiencing each and every year. And it, it's simply due to unsafe food. And what they've done is they've actually broken that down into what is the loss um, of productivity. And when you take that, that 110 billion and you look at that specifically from a loss of productivity from a global level, that 95.2 billion is associated with lost productivity. So medical costs and all of that play into what these costs are, but we really are seeing a loss of productivity in the world. And, and that has to do a lot with people not being able to go to work because they're sick, um, having lower incomes or earning potentials because of, of the fact that they've been experiencing diarrheal disease throughout their life. And so I think that, that that's a really big point to make. When we zoom in on Asia, we see that quite a large amount of that total 95.2 billion is, is associated with Asia and, and countries within Asia. And so Bangladesh would fall into that. And so again, not to belabor some of these, these statistics, you may have seen them before, but I think it begins to really bring out the issue of, of food safety. And I hope it's helping us all recognize that there's a lot of people involved, right? This, this affects all of us in different ways. And so what is food safety, right? We've talked a lot about foodborne disease, foodborne illness, food safety, is really the discipline that seeks to, to eliminate foodborne disease, to protect populations against foodborne disease. And, and food safety has some principles within it that if we follow those principles, we can actually reduce the likelihood of poor public health outcomes based upon the reduction of three major hazard groups within our food. And so that would be our biological, our chemical, and our physical hazards. And, and we've talked a little bit about that already. So I've presented a bunch of information to you, and I bet what you're asking yourself is, what can we do, right? This, this is clearly an issue that needs to be um, addressed. So, so what can we do? What is, what is everybody's role in this? And so I always like to say, you know, when it comes to who has the responsibility for food safety, it's everyone's business, right? Everybody has a part to play. And, and sometimes I think if, if we're not necessarily specifically working for the BFSA, or if we're not in a food production company, we, we may think, well, this is not really my responsibility, but it, it is. You absolutely, even if you're a consumer at home, you have different tools with it in your tool belt that you can utilize that will help protect you and your family. And so when it comes to the responsibilities, um, I've broken this into four major groups. And, and that's, that's not to say that there aren't more groups involved, but I've broken it into the responsibility of regulators, the private sector, the scientific community, and consumers. And so when we think about what are the responsibilities of our regulators, Regulators are really the leaders, right? They, they, they're the headship of how we address food safety concerns. And so some of their responsibilities are to set scientifically informed food safety standards. And I really want to stress that these standards need to be scientifically informed and they need to communicate with other standards across the world because 
that really helps us open up um, the same language, right? So even though Bangladesh and the US, does, we don't speak the same language, we can speak the same food safety language if we have the same set of standards that we are applying to our food systems. The other responsibilities that, that the regulation groups or the government groups really have is to coordinate and collaborate on surveillance and monitoring programs. And this is a really key point, is that we need to have all of our different groups working together. And so we may have different agencies that oversee different parts of our food production, but those groups need to coordinate and collaborate together. And they need to work together to, produ to protect public health and conduct surveillance of public health, as well as to monitor food production and, and food safety within that space. And so I can't stress enough the importance of, of coordination and collaboration amongst our government groups. They also can guide food safety policy, right? They're, again, I say they're our headship, our leadership. And so they need to uh, be taking forward what, what is the guidance for the policies that need to be developed. And then ultimately they need to communicate with the private sector and consumer groups. And so that includes communicating regulatory expectations. Um, if there's any changes in regulatory guidance, right? So there's sometimes we adapt or we change or shift based upon new evidence or changes within our systems. And so that need, those changes need to be communicated to the private sector as well as to consumer groups so that they really understand how is food safety being governed within my country and, and what, what can I do to ensure that, that I'm following those guidance. They also need to make sure that they communicate on all current data. So data that's being produced um, in terms of food safety really should be communicated pretty widely. And that really allows us to work together in order to ensure um, good outcomes. And then ultimately, the regulatory groups, their, their responsibility is to enforce food safety standards. So they're setting those standards, and then we really need to have systems in place to help enforce those standards. So in terms of the private sector, the private sector is probably playing one of the larger roles in terms of carrying food safety, right? So we have our leadership, which is in the regulatory groups, and then the private sector really needs to work together and, and carry forward some of those practices, those standards and guidances. And so what I would say that some of the responsibilities of the private sector are is, is first and foremost, you need to stay informed, right? So having individuals within your teams, within your companies that are responsible for keeping you informed on food safety regulatory guidances, on changes in data, new evidence, just stay informed because that's going to allow you to adapt to any of the changing environments that may exist. You obviously have to comply with the food safety standards that have been set. And so making sure that you have systems in place that allow you to comply with those standards and, and I would say that some of those systems are using global food safety guidelines and practices. And so I know that Bangladesh follows Codex Alimentarius. And so looking into Codex Alimentarius and, and having systems that can be adopted and adapted from that, as well as the GFSI or HACCP. And I know that those are all things that different private sector groups within uh, Bangladesh are achieving to, to gain certifications in, and, and that is a really promising way forward in order for you to ultimately comply with the food safety standards that have been set. And then I would suggest really kind of to go along with that, you have to have um, a monitoring and control programs within your, your systems, right? So if you're producing food, there has to be some form of a monitoring and control program. And that goes back to this Codex Alimentarius, the GFSI, HACCP, those all are systems that will allow you to effectively implement monitoring and control programs. You need to also be able to respond to food safety deficiencies and or non-compliance issues that, that you have. And so one of the big things that we have in the US is our outbreak response system. And so depending upon if you are regulated underneath the USDA or regulated under the FDA, there are a set of steps that need to happen in terms of outbreak situations. 
or recall situations. And so being able to quickly respond to any deficiencies or non-compliance issues. Ultimately, you have to continue to, to participate with the government agencies to collaborate with them and then communicate with consumers. And sometimes I think private sector doesn't necessarily feel like communicating with consumers is always a good idea, but the, the more transparent you can be with your consumer groups, the more trust you ultimately establish. And, and we really do want consumers to believe in our systems and, and trust the products that we are producing for them. So when it comes to the scientific community, I always um, look at the scientific community as a very um, good source of information, right? We have a responsibility to produce non-biased, scientifically rigorous data and share that data with the government groups as well as the private sector. And, and so I would suggest a few things for the scientific community. Obviously we investigate food safety questions, but really when we, we get into the space of informing individuals, that that's, that's really the, the space that the scientific community should be in. It's about providing information and data to help make decisions. And so ultimately we want to, we want to produce really good data. We want to conduct scientifically rigorous studies that, that provide data, data that is, isn't biased or isn't um, communicating something that, that's untrue. And so the scientific community is our informing group. And then finally, what's the responsibility of the consumer? And I think it gets easy to think, well, I'm just the consumer. I don't have a lot of control over what's happening from a food safety perspective. And, and that is, is not really true. And so as a consumer, what are some things that I can do within my own home to protect the safety of the food that I'm consuming? And I would start with educate yourself, right? You need to understand what food safety is. You need to understand what some of the major risks that are associated with the food that you consume are. And then you need to, to educate yourself and then follow at home food safety handling um, guidances. So that includes cooking practices as well as hygiene practices within your home. So there's a lot that we can do within our own homes to reduce contamination and cross-contamination in order to, to protect our families. We can, we can purchase food from trusted sources. So making sure that we understand where the, the products that we are purchasing came from and how they were handled. And, and that can really help to put us in a space where we can control some of, of the contamination that may be occurring. We also want to identify trustworthy sources of information. It really is a responsibility of, of consumers and just our, our general populations to, to look for trustworthy sources of information. And that really goes back to our scientific community. Look into scientific data. Um, if there's something that's being put out in the media, look into it, um, read about it, try to identify whether or not you trust that source, and then stay informed and ultimately let your voice be heard. So as a consumer, you have the right to consume safe food and, and you, you can let your voice be heard on that topic. And so with that, I think I may have gone a little bit long, but I do want to say thank you very much. And I will take questions. I, in rule, I don't know exactly how you want to handle questions, but I can take questions. And with that, I am done. Uh, thank you very much, Jesse. It's a very good, lively presentation. Thanks once again for that. We'll be having separate QA sessions. So on that session, we'll be asking questions to the audience and they can also write questions to the QA part. Already we have found some questions. Maybe we'll organize the question and answer session after the uh, but we have kept separate sessions, so on that session we'll be answering all the questions. So, Dhanobad, JCK, that Mulhuman book to book on Kora Juno, keynote paper top on Kora Juno. A project, I mean, Professor Iqbal Ruf Mamun, Professor Kabishu Bidalai, in Amadej Kupriyo, an ex member, he shaved a Bahaj Kusti property that successfully completed the Chanamuni Department of Education. The Sarke Bidinduha request for both. 
যে আমরা যে সমস্যাগুলো ফেস করছি যে কেমিক্যাল কন্টামিনেশন নিয়ে উপস্থিত এবং কেমিক্যাল কন্টামিনেশন নিয়ে ঠিক এই বিষয়বস্তু নিয়ে যদি একটু আলোচনা করেন well uh, thank you very much jesse uh, do you hear me yes yeah thank you very much you. for your uh, very nice presentations mahfud sir assalam alaikum sir aap tak dekhte pacche tha apnar laptop bodhai ke ha amake dekhte pacchen na dekha jacche na sir apnar laptop e eta ekটু nichu na na ekhon dekha jacche puro ta ashe ei bhai bhai बेंगोली No, no worries please speak bangla i i think i think it is better to discuss the issue in english because there is a main participant is jc is from he cannot he cannot understand bangla okay and okay. most uh, of us and can i cannot in... see uh... other participants yes, sir bangla e oneke ache to sir bangla holo sir bhalo bhai pur bangla english er mix kore bolen kono somoshya nei sir सलामकुम सर I cannot see you. Anyway, uh, and I can see another okay, participant, Munju Kok. Salam alaikum. And what uh, would say he is my friend, current member, that is out for him. Uh, uh, good evening, and Assalam alaikum to all of you. We have just finished beautiful, fantastic uh, uh, from keynote speech from uh, uh, JC uh, JC uh, V Farm, right? i uh, and i just uh, uh, mentioned uh, pointing out your lecture in some uh, slides uh, everybody you a uh, uh, general overall uh, lecture on uh, what is food safety and uh, what is the responsibility of whom because it's not gel it, it is for uh, it's a uh, it, it's it's a shared responsibility among uh, producers government regulators i mean Uh, consumers and also uh, industry people so uh, main thing what is i feel i had been four years in bangladesh food safety authority uh, it was my pleasure to work there uh, one of the chairman is here uh, and there was another chairman the founding chairman uh, my i will just uh, uh, share my experience uh, during my uh, stay over there uh, as i am i have been requested to talk on chemical contaminants only so i will concentrate on that uh, first of thing uh, as is that to educate the people which is a big lack in our country all the consumers even uh, the regulators many of the regulators do not have the idea real idea about food safety management system what is food safety so food safety is a pretty new concept in bangladesh started in 2015 it is only 5 uh, years going on uh, so what i uh, i found the number of misconceptions misperceptions about chemical contaminants in bangladesh uh, and you know that uh, people are scared very much to take food to buy food uh, from the market especially especially uh, fruits and uh, vegetable uh, and there was there was a uh, uh, belief in the, in the in the consumers that all the uh, fruits and vegetables are uh, highly contaminated with formalin which was a, just uh, a myth which was uh, there was no scientific evidence 
anywhere. Uh, so food safety authority started work on awareness program first when it was established. And a lot of awareness program all over the country. Uh, so we, we try to uh, convey the message to the people that formalin is not an issue for fruits and vegetables. And it was very hard for us to make them understand or to make them believe that uh, what we are cooking or what we are So there we, uh, Food Safety Authority and FAO jointly did some research on that issue, uh, tested a number of samples, 28 items from the market and analyzed in appropriate uh, way. That means the way you can uh, really uh, quantitatively determine the amount of uh, formalin, formalin in, in, in food, food sample. So in this, after this research, what we found that uh, in 28 sample, none of the sample exceeded the uh, value, uh, exceeded, behind, exceeded the, uh, uh, what we call the ground level or naturally what they the food contains formaldehyde. And there was no risk found about the consumption of formaldehyde naturally contained in food items. So this was a big, uh, uh, I think, but now I, I'm happy to say you that in these days, I can see in the, in the television uh, advertisement that uh, they say that Bangladesh government says that, yeah, for foods and vegetables are not uh, uh, contaminated with formalin or formalin cannot be, uh, cannot work on increasing cell type of fruits and vegetables. But this, this, this comments was also supported by a research uh, on uh, research from Bangladesh Agricultural University. They did hand on research on testing really, really formalin can work on fruits and vegetables in case of increasing shelf life or not. And they, they stated, they commented that it cannot be used as a as a preservative, or it cannot prevent its shelf life. So this kind of misperception still in Bangladesh, like uh, fake eggs, like uh, 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 color in in, in watermelon. So these things still need to evaluate. Actually, in Bangladesh, main problem could be pesticide residues in 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 food items like fruits, vegetables, or, or other things, maybe heavy metal contents, maybe uh, uh, toxins, maybe microbial contents. This can be the main issue in Bangladesh, which is to be evaluated properly and uh, nationwide. We have found a number of research here and there with a very simple, very minimum number of samples. Someone took 30 samples, someone took nine samples, someone took uh, 20 samples. But this sample, number of samples does not uh, represent the uh, situation of whole country. So food safety authority uh, need to take initiative. I, will, I, I know that food safety authority has a manpower constraint, has uh, uh, no infrastructure, no accredited lab, 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 laboratory of its own, even in Bangladesh, it is difficult to find a uh, laboratory which is accredited for a, for a pesticide residues or, or for, a, for a antibiotic. So this is another issue that how could we evaluate properly? What is the situation actually in Bangladesh? So these are things Food Safety Authority uh, has to establish these this, uh, facilities in, with, with collaboration with uh, private laboratory and train them their own laboratory inside the government agencies like BCS, IR, Atomic Energy Commissions, Bangladesh Agricultural Research Institute. Do, whoever have these uh, laboratories, they should have trained them their laboratory with not only with the instrument, with the method, with the accreditation, also with the field manpower. So it is highly difficult, really difficult to say actually that what is the situation of chemical contamination in Bangladesh food items throughout the country. 
we have uh, except I, I i just want to mention another example few few it is it's maybe in 2018 or 19 maybe in the 90s that uh, 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 it is uh, ipas instead of public health they analyze uh, a number of milk sample number of other samples and you i i found that they analyze the number of sample and found uh, 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 what is called contaminated contaminated sample was only 13 percent the number they analyzed 300 something other 86 or 87 percent sample was okay although i don't say that this represents the whole country but you can see that we we are we are in, in, in a uh, perception, what is actually the situation, we don't know. As you said in your lecture, it has to be uh, scientific evidence-based. If we cannot test our samples with a, uh, a number that represent our whole country, then it is really, really difficult to say what is the real chemical contaminants or microbial contaminants or, or other things. So we have to uh, uh, think about it. We have to strengthen our laboratory. We have to uh, take plan, say sector-wise or product-wise or uh, 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 hazard-wise. That what is the real situation? We can start cluster-wise. We can start fruits-wise. If Bangladesh Food Safety Authority make a strategic plan to establish the uh, situation of contamination, then they can take another further step to minimize that uh, uh, that 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 contamination label or that risk we don't have any risk assessment either so it is the beginning of bangladesh food safety authority i do believe that bangladesh food safety authority will go a long way and uh, they will uh, do they will coordinate it is very difficult to coordinate in our country but they have to do it because they are mandated to do that to coordinate among agencies and to uh, establish a, a sound science-based food safety management system today or tomorrow they have to do it. thank you very much uh, thank you very much sir for your lively presentation and uh Shumai Amra to Kotsadogri, sir, from the Kutu to Shopshima for later, and Bishesh Kurijama, the other participant, a seven number. It is a good call of the Kutchi for the data publicly and open to the Now, requesting Jesse, Jesse, our chairman has left. He has rejoined as name Anika Tabasum. I have given the name in your chat box. Please take your chat box so that he can join. Is Anika Tabasum Raisa. I, okay. I see him. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mauro. Thank you very much. Equal of Mamusar Kavadu Novajana Chita, a photo of us, the Matheshu, Saraman, the Shopshuma, Shundu, Kotavali, and other can encourage Kurachin, a sector, the Kashkora journal. So a programmer A for J, I mean, request Kurva, their honorable guest of guest of honor. Manito Shodusho, Mamot Rezaul Kurim Sar, Rezal Kurim Sar, who sit authority this afternoon, the placement action, Mamusa replacement action, as a particular two dedicated near a bit chin of Pabuni Kachkurizat. Sarki request for this after a book to book on Korachan. Sir, after unmute Kurtavisa, unmute. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Uh, did you hear me? Yes, we are hearing you. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I, uh, thank you. Uh, I first of all, I uh, uh, welcome all of you in the August gathering. I salute my Reverend ex chairman, Mahmoud Mahfudul Hoksar, present uh, joined this meeting. Uh, very uh, inception, I Welcome, Jesse, uh, to whom we met several months before in Dhaka. Uh, perhaps. Uh, thank you. I think all of you are well, and uh, I think uh, you will hope you will be well being for uh, the days uh, tomorrow. 
sir uh, i have i i eagerly uh, attend the speeches uh, jesse and my uh, friend mamun uh, you know i to disclose the uh, some information uh, dr mamun is my uh, batchmate in university we were at the same hall and same residence we stayed and i uh, to, uh, took the baton in uh, uh, phsf from him he mr mamun narrated all the things all the points uh, about bfsm he categorically uh, discuss about the uh, potentialities challenges uh, which he felt which is uh, which has uh, he has uh, faces uh, in, in his tenure the main problem i to speak frankly bfs is the mandated for from the government to raise government uh, for uh, ensuring uh, safe food for the nation for betterment of his uh, population for his uh, future generation and to lowering the huge cost burdening uh, for uh, health crisis health cost uh, this is the mandate of the uh, present government uh, our reverend our uh, highly esteemed our uh, prime minister uh, she by herself uh, took the responsibility for enacted the law and then the uh, this organ uh, organ the organize this organization uh, this is a new organization yet though it is bangladesh uh, is a culture a uh, food safety culture is new in bangladesh uh, it is uh, like other asian countries you know uh, jc uh, very well as you traveled travels many of the uh, uh, asian countries our uh, main problem challenge is the huge dearth of human resources you know uh, bangladesh food safety authority really has no own uh, human resources but uh, last year uh, we uh, made a tremendous and hectic job to recruit the huge number of uh, uh, human resources particularly uh, the technocrats uh, tech, uh, technological person technical persons uh, background of uh, microbiology uh, uh, biochemistry food science nutrition uh, etc but yet uh, today till today we did not uh, uh, finalize their uh, joining i hopefully by july we will uh, be able to make them joining in our organization then the the set will be an asset for our organization and then we can go further but we are very much uh, conscious about it the main challenges uh, hot uh, mamuns uh, uh, told misconceptions stigmas Uh, uh and many other uh, in every sector we are lacking behind uh, because of the our food safety education among the among uh, the students among the um, stakeholders and various types of stakeholders uh, so it is very difficult uh, we are trying to address the matter from we are try we are pursuing ministry of uh, education to Uh, incorporate food safety education in the tech uh, um, school and educational curriculum particularly secondary school and uh, primary school level and uh, they agreed and uh, they are trying uh, hopefully we will we were expecting to uh, have a new curriculum uh, this year but uh, due to uh, the pandemic situation it might not be uh, this year but uh, hopefully tomorrow it will be Uh, uh, in it, it will be uh, 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 in built uh, uh, we are trying to uh, uh, make an public awareness uh, among uh, the uh, throughout the country we last year we did uh, 23 public awareness meetings among the students cross sectional people uh, and very various uh, types of our stakeholders it is it is very scanty level it is very i, I do believe i do 
uh, admit it. Uh, it is very uh, very uh, small amount. Uh, we need to expand our uh, our, our uh, public awareness uh, activities so uh, vigorously. But due to the shortage of manpower and our other some uh, uh, administrative difficulties, so we could not uh, years much. But hopefully we will uh, do it uh, with our uh, very uh, very much uh, 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 wise and uh, very uh, our uh, um, potential chairman. We shall uh, in future we shall uh, try to overcome our the lackings. Uh, we have uh, we are uh, we have already uh, you know we have already uh, recruited our. Uh, some uh, personnel like uh, sample collectors they are already in places at the respective uh, districts and uh, whether we uh, achieve we will uh, success to uh, recruit our officers they will already uh, be uh, in uh, their respective areas then we shall start a new journey uh, and uh, our uh, lack of uh, training we have lack of training facilities training modules training uh, um, uh, and logistics also and many other things but we are marching uh, 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 as uh, expectation we are uh, already we have busy uh, trying to install our central lab we talk to our um, government agencies to allocate some spaces in the uh, suitable area uh, to, uh, to allow, allow us to set up our headquarters and uh, our central lab and already we are we have visited a location nearby Dhaka to finalize our central lab. Hopefully uh, if government uh, situation became normal we will be able to uh, come forward with some specific uh, development. Uh, uh, this time i do uh, a stop and then uh, we shall, uh, shall if i find i shall join later thank you thank you very much sir for pointing out pointing out the current scenario and your desire and your vision and mission sharing with all the participants who are with us uh, now i would like to request our ex chairman who has given a lot of effort to make the vfc uh, functional like the institutionalized PFSA, our most dearest Mr. Mark Pujul Hawk, sir. Sir, sir, unmute good to have a setup now. Unmute good to have a sir. Kya abar dekha jat se na abar ekhon mute. Hey, hey, dekha jat se na? Ekhon dekha jat se? Ekhon ekhon dekha jat se sir. Hey, ekhon dekha jat se? Ji ji ji. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Imrul, for giving me also opportunity to participate in the discussion. Although I was not formally invited, and but due to my passion in the food safety, I voluntarily participated in the discussion. I'm very much happy to meet the, my old colleagues at the food safety. Most of them I recognized, but I have no, I, I did not got any opportunity to introduce with the new chairman but I hired about the Mr. Abdul Kayum Sarkar, new chairman of the Food Safety Authority of Bangladesh. So in this opportunity, I got an opportunity to meet my old friends and old colleagues at the Food Safety Authority. So I'm very much happy. So, you know, as a food safety is a big challenge for us. And, you know, the food safety, foodborne illness is a big challenge and no doubt that burn of foodborne diseases is substantial in our country, like the world community. That is why the Bangladesh government food, put much emphasis on ensuring food safety, establishing the new act, food safety act in 2013 and establishing the Food Safety Authority in 2015. And we started many, despite there is a, a lot of challenges in the food safety in Bangladesh, 
but would try to establish the food safety authority in as a good foundation you know that already the organization structure of the food safety authority was established and the new i we heard about the the that the, the personnel of the manpower of the food safety authority is already established already appointed uh, manpower of the food safety authority i am very much enlightened with the presentation of jc i already I, i i think i met miss jc i met whenever i was in the food safety authority i had an opportunity to meet with the miss jc it is correct i met met her yes sir you right sir you met you met yes sir uh, in the training program right sir. i think in the baridara baridara training session i met her at that time right sir yes, sir. you organized a training program for the food inspectors aristocrat hotel sir hotel aristocrat aristocratic yes 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 at that time i met her so there is a, i i am very much enriched with the presentation of mr mamun my ex colleague at food safety authority professor mamun at dhaka university and the member of the food safety authority mr rezaul korim about the update development of the food safety authority so you know despite there is a big challenges on the ensuring food safety authority for the country in our country you know you know we are in a we are in a now developing country and we have a, a lot of challenges in different areas but despite those challenges we achieved a lot and bangladesh is the first country who started observing the national food safety day from 2015 2018 we started food safety day from the throughout the country and uh, being in that in that case bangladesh is the pioneer to observing the national food safety day and after that uh, world community started the world food safety day from 2019 and probably and this was started from the from the there is a uh, food safety conference in addis ababa and in the uh, addis ababa and geneva confirm we we had i, I had an uh, opportunity to attend those conferences in addis ababa conference i also had joined as a panel discussion in the addis ababa conference the outcome of the addis ababa and geneva forum in 2019 the food safety day starts observing from 2019 and we started this food safety day observing the food safety day nationally from 2018 in our country and uh, in that the uh, this year's theme of the food safety day is the food safety everyone's business and which we realized earlier much more earlier we organized a international food safety conference in 2017 probably in august 25 and 26 two day conference held in hotel sonarga pen pacific sonarga comprising the food industry academicians and a number of international experts from national and international areas about 300 delegates participated in this conference mm. and the theme of that conference was that the food safety the shared responsibility which is most much more similar with this theme of this year so Bangladesh government you know is very much committed to ensure food safety within the shortest possible time that is why they enacted the new law food safety act in 2013 and repealing the previous pure food ordinance 1958 and Bangladesh also uh, the government of Bangladesh is very much committed that is why in the election manifesto of the tuta Bangladesh army league they food the food safety ensuring food safety as the priority sector in this country so bangladesh 
is very much ahead of taking initiatives in different areas. We heard from the discussion of the Mr. Rezal Korim. They are going to establish a modern food safety laboratory within the shortest possible time. They are looking for a good location and land for the establishing the food safety laboratory. And they already appointed the necessary manpower for the food safety authority. And we, you know, and Bangladesh with the collaboration of the Bangladesh Food Safety Authority and, and FAO, we started a four-year graduation course in the Bangladesh Agriculture University for the food safety management people, for the skilled man, man, manpower for the food safety people. And a lot of initiatives, other initiatives are already taken and there is a, a Bangladesh Food Safety Authority already published a lot of rules and regulations required for the food safety enforcement in the country. Likely the food safety uh, technical committee formation and food safety sample analysis, examination and the analysis and food additives, food labeling and food contaminant, toxin and harmful residue and food hygiene and those areas and we also and ensuring food safety and government had taken different initiatives and we have to implement these initiatives in the field level. And we also working on the, to adopt the good practices in the country and like good uh, manufacturing practice, good hygiene practice, good agricultural practice and good um, uh, manufacturing practice, all those areas. And on also we had taken different initiatives to, to make the food safe from farm to fork. And for business communities, we, uh, we have taken different initiatives to train the people and to develop the different standard procedures, operating procedures for the business people and for manufacturing and in handling the food safely. And we also had taken different initiatives to aware the people. The consumer awareness is the main important issue for food safety. And before that, whenever I joined in the Food Safety Authority as a chairman, and many of my colleagues do not understand what is food safety. But I can say that nowadays, many people, every people of our country can know about the food safety. What they, they know the importance of the food safety and what is food safety. Everybody was discussed about the food safety issues in the country in the, in the, in the, because of the, we run different awareness program among the television, media, and the newspaper and also from running the awareness program in the different regions of the country. And we have taken different initiatives to coordinately address the food safety issues in our country. We made the different coordination committees and we have made MOUs with the main food implementing agencies. We find out the gaps and the overlapping of the food safety issues in the country. Now the main problem in our country is that the Food Safety Authority is the coordinating agency of the country, central coordinating agency, but their power is much more less. And the, I think the chairman of the Food Safety Authority and the other uh, administrative people will be a high ranking people will be, will be because the other agencies, they are headed by the secretaries, many of the countries. I can give you an example. The BSTI is the one of the implementing agencies in our country for food safety. But the chairman of the DG of the BSTI he is the grade one officer in the, and the other many secretaries are responsible for implementing the food safety issues in the country. So being the a junior officer to them, how he can instruct them how to give him the give give him give them instruction so 
you have to appoint a chairman at the, at least at the senior secretary level so that he can instruct the authorities the organizations to implement the food safety authorities instruction another issue is that and we have to address the food safety issues in our country not administratively but it should be addressed professionally professional people will look after this uh, should be appointed in the food safety authority and we have to address the issues scientifically not as for assumption or the assumption of the people or the perception of the people and being should be addressed scientifically so professional legal people should be engaged in the food safety in uh, and the and some other issues and should be addressed and because the training and awareness program should be run to the i think food safety issues should be we can overcome food safety issues if the consumers will be aware about the food safety how they can can what they are cooking what they are storing foods and if they know the risks of the food borne diseases and food borne illness about the risks so this is uh, shortly i think and bangladesh will be a leader of the food safety issues in the country within the shortest possible time and i congratulate all my colleagues in the food safety authority who are working in the food safety for implementing the food safety act and in this in this and all thank you so much thank you very much sir for your nice presentations and elaborating the actual scenario of bangladesh food safety authority and the barriers that we are facing for a long time i know you we have uh, we know you have tried a lot is still the fight is going on but you have given some instruction directions that we can take and we can plan our next way forward to get it solved anyway in this uh, before listening to our honorable chairman our honorable chief guest we would like to take some question from our audience we have seen lot of question in the uh, panel so jesse how uh, how to answer those question will you read it i have seen already you have pushed, you have answered some of the question and uh, since you have already answered so it will be fine if you can if you can uh, read the question and answer so that all the participants can get your point okay yeah absolutely so we've had some great questions that have come in at this point i would say um one of the ones i want to talk about is there was a question on disinfecting fruit and vegetables that are being consumed raw and the participant specifically stated that there's concern around coronavirus and and making sure that we can disinfect fruits and vegetables that are going to be consumed raw um in order to protect from foodborne disease as well as from infectious diseases such as covid-19 and i want to take uh the opportunity to to share that at this point in time there's no evidence that covid-19 is transmitted through food and so um until we have any types of transmission that are observed from food products we want to be very conscientious to not uh, communicate that that covid-19 can be spread through food because of the fact that you know we don't want to create any types of of scare or panic and so i think that that is a situation that will be frequently monitored at the time there's no evidence that it is a food borne transmission it's a human to human transmission and there's from the center of disease control and prevention the cdc in the us that may indicate that it is not even spread from uh, contact with surfaces so it's more coming into contact with an individual who has covid-19 and that person coughs or sneezes and those air particulates go out into the air that you then breathe in and that's really been the largest um source of transmission that's been observed for covid-19 
And so I just wanted to make that point real quick. In terms of cleaning vegetables and fruits, I think that that's an important topic to talk about. And the FDA, which is the governing body in the United States, um, really wants to communicate that sanitizers and soaps are not necessarily approved for cleaning vegetables and fruits. And the reason why that is, is because we can, um, if we mishandle those sanitizers or those soaps, what we ultimately will do is we will leave a chemical residue on those products. And so in our attempt to eliminate biological contamination, we will actually add a chemical contaminant. And so there's, there's really no recommendation for using sanitizers or soaps when we clean our vegetables. What the recommendation is, is to use clean water in order to wash those vegetables. If the vegetable has a hard surface, you can use a vegetable brush or a clean brush. It doesn't necessarily have to be a vegetable brush, but a clean scrub brush to wipe off the surfaces and scrub that vegetable or that fruit and then rinse it again. Another point that I think is really important is we want to make sure that we clean all of our vegetable or fruit surfaces before we cut into those products. So if we cut, uh, you know, maybe there, there's a rotten or a spoiled portion of an apple or a potato, and we want to cut that away before we consume, we, we don't want to make any cuts before we clean the surface of that product. And the reason why that is, is when we cut, we can actually, with our knife, pull dirt and bacteria and contamination down into that cut. And that, that can tend to be harder to clean that outside surface. So making sure that we clean all of our vegetables and fruits prior to making any cuts or nicks on them. Um, let's see. We also had some questions around the fact that the pandemic has created some opportunities for um, increased awareness of personal hygiene. And I really agree with that. I think that the pandemic, as, as hard as it has been for everyone, I think has really provided some opportunity for further communication of disease prevention and control. And that, that through the pandemic, Hygiene has really been highlighted as an important factor in, in protecting public health. And so I do think that food safety can utilize similar lessons that have been learned from the pandemic to attempt to make consumers more aware. One of the biggest issues we see with foodborne disease is that many people don't really either recognize that they're experiencing a foodborne disease or it's not um, aggressive enough that they actually do anything about it. And so all of us have at one point in our time had a, a stomach that did not feel very good. And so we may have stayed home for a couple of days, but then really we went back to our life. And it's really in those extreme cases where people get really, really sick and then ultimately can die. And so I think utilizing the platform that the pandemic has created for, for hey, Sadiq. protection of public health Sadiq. is, is, is hey, Sadiq. an for sure. Emerald, do you want to keep doing questions or do you want to go yeah, forward we, with speakers? I have, uh, I have some specific questions from one of the participants. Uh, this question is to Rizal Purim, sir. Um, uh, it's, it's a Muddin from Meridian Food. He said, uh, since BSTI and BFSA is working the same field, is there any coordination? Is, is there any coordination mechanism established by this time to act with uh, by having good understanding of both the organization? One question. Then second question is also, uh, oh. since it was discussed for a long time that the food safety food safety chapter or subject would be included in the course curriculum of uh, our education. So what is the progress of that? Uh, thank you. Thank you for the very uh, vibrant and very important question. Uh, yes, uh, 
BF, BSTA is an uh, old age uh, standardized organization uh, working under the auspices of Bangladesh uh, Ministry of Industry. Uh, it is an uh, uh, it is an organization uh, for uh, setting the standard for all sorts of products from food to uh, uh, grape. I I should say all the items in Bangladesh uh, is to be standardized by. Uh, the, the standard and testing institution. But uh, uh, sensing the necessity of ex, uh, exponentially and explicitly for food, government established Food Safety Authority uh, under the uh, Act of uh, Bangladesh Food Safety uh, Act 1913. It, the BFSA is an apex Good body of food safety regulation. Uh, its main uh, uh, main task is to ma make the things done so through coordination. It is a, re a really it's a coordinated body. Uh, it will make the things. It will make other organizations, the food food safety or the other organizations. Uh, maybe it is government or semi-government or local government. Uh, this organ this BFS will. He has every mandate to give instruction to other organization according to the opinion by scientific opinion. Uh, so uh, there is no uh, scope for um, a misunderstanding or miscoordination among this organization. Uh, if uh, in the eye of law, um, Bangladesh Food Safety uh, Act. Uh, 2013, if any laws or if any standard uh, is detrimental to the Act of 19, uh, 2013 Food Safety Act, Bangladesh uh, Food Safety Authority can instruct to uh, scrap this law or to amend this law. And this organization is bound uh, to do this accordingly. So, uh, Bangladesh Food Safety Authority and BSTI has no uh, misunderstanding, uh, but they are uh, doing echo, uh, um, very peacefully and uh, according to the uh, act of uh, according to the uh, sense of government. So um, there is no uh, misunderstanding. And another question, if you repeat, please. Uh, next question, please. Uh, sir, since we have been working for a long time to include uh, food safety subject in the course curriculum of uh, academic course sure. curriculum in our... Uh, in, thank in you. Collaboration thank with you. The, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, during the tenure of our uh, last uh, um, past chairman, Mahfudulok sir, he, uh, he made a proposal to the Ministry of... Uh, uh, education to include uh, the food safety issues in the curriculum and we after uh, him we conveyed we, we communicated with the ministry of uh, education Bangladesh tax board authority and they agreed upon and uh, they uh, hopefully uh, as i mentioned uh, they uh, uh, understandably uh, introduced in the uh, this year's curriculum but uh, hence the uh, pandemic uh, issue, uh, it is yet to be finalized. So hopefully they are on principle, they are agreed and uh, within very uh, short or in future, near future, we will find uh, in our curriculum uh, about food safety issue. I, uh, I, I like to add some uh, uh, Informations according to the uh, speeches by Mahfuz sir. Uh, we already um, uh, constituted the technical committees. One of the member of technical committees, uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Mamun here, uh, we already practiced uh, some uh, pilot project uh, uh, regarding uh, implication of gap in nursing the area. Uh, uh, we uh, tried to um, establish a healthy market of a uh, wet market. Already, FAO and other organizations uh, came forward. Say, Dhaka uh, South uh, North City Corporations 
uh, uh, we have already uh, made some meetings Bangladesh uh, Ministry of Agriculture also, Agriculture and Marketing Department, uh, some uh, technical committee also established, formed. And the uh, coordination, uh, it, is, uh, it is a matter of billion dollar question in Bangladesh. Nobody wants to give space, uh, but it, it will take time. We are, uh, we are progressing. We've, we are uh, thinking about uh, not to make castle. We are uh, uh, likely to uh, forward uh, after implementing, after after adopting our laws, rules, standards, uh, SOPs, COPs, and uh, uh, food related other uh, uh, soft uh, rules, soft uh, uh, I think powers also. And we have some uh, uh, lackings, uh, lack of data. We have uh, very, uh, it's very our, our weak point. Uh, we are, we need a um, database. And moreover, the, the, the Bani question in Bangladesh, we have no structural food business regulation. Uh, in the food business, uh, uh, the, the regulatory framework is very weak. Uh, we to uh, establish this uh, regulatory. If anybody wants to do a business, uh, it is a gray a gray area from fire to and how to uh, establish a food business. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, since we are running out of time, we will not take uh, any uh, any question. Although we have gathered a lot of questions, but I am promising that all the questions will be answered and we, we all the answers of the question will be sent it to particular participants and we'll be sharing the question answer to social media also. Uh, Jesse, uh, if you have any important question to answer, you can you can give only one question answer now, otherwise we'll go directly to the chairman. Do you have any uh, important questions that need to be answered now? No, I think let's go ahead and move on to the yeah. chairman and give him yeah. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the uh, question and QA sessions. Now I'd like to request our Honorable Chairman, Mr. Mohammed Abdul Tayyum Sharkar, Chairman Bangladesh Food Safety Authority and Additional Secretary, Bangladesh, Bangladesh Government. Sir. Uh, am I clear in the monitor? Yes, yeah, sir, you are clear, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Assalamu alaikum and very good evening for this good session. First, I like to thank Ms. Jesse for his nice and very good presentation of mentioning this day, the World Food Safety Day. And this year slogan is Food safety, everyone business. I think it is a proper subject, the choice for this year, because we know that food supply and production is a chain business. So anybody of this chain is not working properly, then it is not possible. It will not be possible to supply pure food to everybody. I thanks our ex-chairman sir for his uh, very good informative presentation about the uh, beginning of this of our organization because I am new here uh, uh, in March. I have joined the BFS and then office is closed for uh, COVID-19 pandemic and we are now, uh, it is continue today, we know. But from you, I have got very good information about our organization and also good suggestions. I think this will help us. And also our ex-member, he also uh, put some good points and suggestions to us, I think this will also be good for us and helpful for us. 
already uh, our one of our member mr rajul puri mentioned our uh, targets and what the function we are doing so i think uh, uh, already he explained all of this and all of you know i first thanks how for their kind help to uh, get Uh, 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 they help for uh, they for the kind of help to uh, construct our organization in a good position, and they are still they are extending their help to us for this. I think the you know the background of. establishing bfsa from the very beginning from it is 1959 there is a law in our country it is pure food ordinance you know and we are keeping uh, ensuring food safety under this act pure pure food ordinance and uh, there is not so elaborate function to ensuring food safety only some mobile courts are uh, contacting by different district magistrates by their uh, magistrates and by giving some license we are conducting to ensure food safe safe food for our people but it is not working properly you know today 18 ministries and divisions are working for supplying foods in our country and also 48 480 organization including local governments are also include in this process and 1.5 million businessmen producers and private bodies are engaged in food production processing and supplying so there is a big question to coordinate among those ministries divisions businessmen organization entity and institutions to build awareness to the people to coordinate all the concerns and to establish the mandate of food safety in supplying and production of food for this region our honorable prime minister she thinks the very clearly because in the early ages we are thinking about our uh, food production to ensure our food safety but after increasing our production now it is our headache to ensure safe food for the people because we have already uh, in the level of mid level countries lower mid level and then we are trying to go get to the mid level countries so it is very much essential for us to ensure safe uh, food safety for the people to ensure a good health and for for our country and this why our honorable prime minister thinks it properly and in 2013 the food safety act enacted and in 2015 the organization bfsa bangladesh food safety authority established our ex chairman sir he is very much know it with it i just as a chairman just mention the background of our food uh, establishing food safety authority this organization main function of this organization to coordinate among the different organizations and ministries whom uh, the uh, which uh, ministries and organize their uh, uh, acting with food production processing and supply that why in our act we have two options we 
concern minister or secretary of concern ministers and divisions a committee was formed headed by our food minister these um, uh two committee i think one is headed by our honorable food minister and all the secretaries of concerned divisions and ministries and also representative from private bodies and honorable mp from the uh, parliament it is formed to give advice advisory council uh, uh, the formation of uh, the name of the committee is and to give advice to the all concerns to ensure how to ensure food safe, safe food to our people and uh, it is mandatory to organize two meetings in a year if needed we can conduct more meetings and another committee is working on that with all the related organization headed by chairman of bfsa it is coordinate on coordination committee to coordinate among all the concerns to ensure in a coordinated way to ensure safe food for our people and also mr rajon kore mentioned that we are working to enhance our our uh, organization to root level already we have recruited people uh, selected we are waiting for police verification report and we think within this month we can uh, uh, have the, those people then we can start our offices in all the divisions and all the district levels and by this way we can ex extend our activities among whole of the country and we are trying to establish our own office to increase our capacity and also a lab for our organization we have primarily selected places for those to uh, target uh, to uh, establishment and we think within few days or within few years we can uh, start our office from in our new own building and also can start our lab lab to ensure and give quick report to the people to uh, about the quality of the food or safe food and also mr rajul kurim previously explained that uh, we are trying to uh, with education ministries to include safe food rules and safe food principles in the Uh, academic curriculum of the schools and colleges the uh, so that we can build aware among the people from the very uh, early age and also uh, we are conducting awareness program with our farmers with our, with the producers in different ways we also organize meetings in uh, district levels and deputy commissioners are also extended their support uh, help to us and they are conducting uh, mobile courts with the help of their uh, executive magistrates and also we uh, through the electronic media print media and other media we are uh, ever uh, 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 we are conducting awareness program among the people so that they can easily know what is safe food what could they eat what could what they could not eat for example in for mango and other fruits 
there is a common uh, propaganda that it is contaminated by uh, formalin and other uh, pesticides. But our expert says that it is not true because formalin cannot contaminate any fruit. And through uh, electronic media and print media, we are awarding people that it is not true that you uh, reject fruit only for formalin. You eat food, it is good for you. So in this way, we are awarding people. We think in, uh, we have already already mentioned Mr. by Mr. Adam Karim, five-year program. And uh, we are, uh, we know uh, many, many way to go for us to, ensure safe food for our people. We, uh, it is also our private, uh, 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 important for us to uh, uh, enact some rules and regulations uh, with related to our uh, Food Safety Act. Already 10 rules uh, introduced and we are working to uh, uh, develop new rules to ensure safe food in all sector, all level of our country. Uh, thank you for this evening, Ms. JC for his nice presentation and all the participants for their uh, nice speech and uh, nice uh, valuable information they have given to us. I think with this, their guidance and with, with their help and with their uh, information, we can uh, run our organization, BFSA, uh, stronger than in the uh, in, uh, in future. And we can ensure with all level with help from all level of private and government organization safe food for our country which is which is very uh, essential for us thank you all of you for your kind and valuable guide, uh, guidance and information and suggestions given to us thank you all Thank you very much, sir, for your nice speech. I hope your guidance and instruction will lead BFSA in a systematic way and it will help to ensure food safety in Bangladesh. Now, <clears throat> I'd like to request our uh, today's chair, Mr. Munju Hock. He is representing private sectors. He's also representing all others, organizations that have been helping us, like uh, Food Safety Forum, uh, like Food Organization Bangladesh, and uh, Alkumas Bangladesh and all other uh, like the uh, Bangladesh Agro Processor Association, Zoner Association, all the private sector. So, sir, I'm requesting you to have a closing remarks, short remarks, since you're running out of time. Monjo. Thank you. Uh, sir, mute, unmute. Uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. First of all, I thanks Mr. Imul Hassan, who is the Honorable Secretary of Institutional Food Promotion of Bangladesh. And due to his uh, personal uh, interest, we, uh, he arranged uh, this program. And also, I thank uh, JC. Uh, JC is my teacher. I attended a course uh, last year in Dhaka. I uh, Thank our first authority chairman, Mr. Kaim Sarkar. Due to corona pandemic, we did not able to meet, to meet with him. Inshallah, when the situation become normal uh, on behalf of institution of food professional, uh, Mr. Imul, me and other uh, officials will meet uh, Mr. Kaim Sarkar, honorable chairman of uh, Bangladesh Food Safety Authority. And I thank uh, Professor uh, Iqbal Mahmood, uh, Dhaka University and with the ex FSA member. And uh, I also thank Mr. Rajul Kurim, the member 
Bangladesh Food Security Authority, and before concluding this all, all session, I again thank Mr. Imrul Hassan, who is our energy due to him. Uh, this uh, institution of food promotion of Bangladesh, we made uh, the new establishment uh, uh, three months before. And due to corona pandemic, we didn't able to uh, guide the whole system. But uh, fortunately, we have a uh, national committee. We have all regional committee. And we have eight region, uh, Dhaka, Chittagong, Mohan Singh, uh, etc. We have all regional committee. And after the corona pandemic, uh, become normal, inshallah, we'll meet in Dhaka and inshallah, we'll uh, invite all the guests uh, presenting here. Mm -hmm. I also uh, thank Mr. Mahabuzul, Mahabuzul Haq. I know him and I have the opportunity to stay with him in uh, Kakrail in the IDB uh, one program and he's a very mm -hmm. nice man and inshallah, after corona pandemic, I will personally meet with him. And again, I thank you, Mr. Indul Hassan, our Honorable Secretary, Minister to Food for Professional Bangladesh. Thank you all. Nice short delivery. And uh, we had actually organized a food safety quiz competition on the occasion of the National uh, World Food Safety Day. We're not going to publish uh, the result currently because uh, we got we got huge response, more than near about 1,000 response we received. And the uh, right answer has been given 70, 75%. 75%. So we are going to make a lottery, then we are going to publish the result. And uh, we will send all the participant uh, certificate on behalf of Kansas State University. And uh, uh, anyway, so thank you very much all the uh, all the uh, panelists, Kim Kest and the other special guests, JC, the case mode speaker. We have other participants that we couldn't able to include here. We have representative from the Bangladesh agro Processor Owner Association. We have representative uh, also here in the USA, USDA, and also the uh, trade facilitation bodies, uh, committees, and, and the lots of participants from the private sectors. I am uh, conveying my heartfelt thanks to them for uh, having the, uh, for uh, staying with us for the long time. And I wish to see you once again in future with a large volume, such a large gathering. It may not be in the wave phase, maybe in a gathering, in the public gathering when the COVID situation will be normal. So once again, I'd like to thank you from my bottom of my heart and thanks for your time to, for, for, for giving this time for the sake of our nation. Thank you very much. Bye. And uh, Jesse, if you have something to say uh, in closing event. I, I just want to take a moment speakers i think that you all are a huge demonstration of the leadership that exists within bangladesh in terms of food safety and i think that you have proven that your commitment to food safety is is very exceptional and and i think that the the future of food safety for bangladesh is in the right hands I also want to thank each participant who attended. I know that it is quite late for you all there. And I want to close by just saying happy World Food Safety Day. And I look very forward to whatever the next opportunity I have to be in Bangladesh and to see you all again. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Very thank much. you.